happy hobby is it is it a happy hobby what what makes it a happy hobby what makes this hobby a happy hobby for you what makes you happy Happy hobby again. My name is David Gonis. If you're a sports car collector and you're working with a limited budget, that's what we do here. That's what we talk about in this channel, David Gonis, uh YouTube channel, the Happy Hobby Sports Cards podcast, the Happy Hobby Sports Cards newsletter on Substack, and davidgonis.com. We do articles that help collectors, help card collectors working on a limited budget. We just hit 4,000 subscribers not too long ago. We're doing a giveaway. Make sure you get in on that. You have to watch that video to know what to do. And it kind of explains the things you have to do to win, possibly win um, SGC9 Shohei Otani Rookie Slab. But today, speaking of Shohei and Happy Happy, let's talk about what makes uh, Happy Hobby happy for you specifically. Now, for me, there's a lot of things that make this hobby a happy one uh for myself, redundant. Uh, one of the things is talking with you, the community itself, the fact that I get to do these videos and people care enough to watch them and comment on them and get involved in giveaways and then I get companies to give us stuff to get give back out to the community because we've got a communication here going on. I love it. It's fantastic. That makes me feel good. Um, none of this is um, ego driven. Like I, I don't really think anyone's coming because they're like what does dave have to say i understand that that's not the case but it's just a conversation that we're having i'll bring up topics that people want to talk about and sometimes in the comments we'll get stuff going back and forth and it's a lot of fun so uh that's for me that's something that makes me happy about this part of the hobby but there's other things that make me happy as well and i wanted to ask you what are the reasons that you get happy in collecting cards collecting sports cards is a it's an odd thing right it's not like a normal thing you know it's a very small percentage of people in the country collect sports cards really when you look at it especially when you look at all the different hobbies there are maybe it's video games or other collecting other things so collecting sports cards is a very honed in uh tight group so i want to know what makes you happy so in this video I want to talk about that. We're going to talk about why we continue to collect cards. And that's the first thing I want to say is congratulations. Here we are in the middle of the second, third decade of the 21st century, and you're still collecting cards. Now, maybe you just started. Maybe you're brand new at collecting cards, which that's cool. Maybe you're a returning collector, much like myself. I, I was away from the hobby for a little bit and then came back. I did it as a youngster and then I came back. Maybe you're like that. Or maybe you're someone who has never stopped collecting cards. That's awesome also. The cool thing is, is all of us, are we can all be mixed in amongst each other and it's not a big problem. We can help the new ones, uh, the returning ones we can help. The veteran ones can give us tips on things to steer clear from. The new ones can help the veterans understand what this new uh, card world is about with parallels and autographs and all that stuff compared to when they were just trying to get base cards back in the vintage days or in the 80s, right? So <clears throat> that's what we want to talk about. What are some of the reasons that you get happy when you collect cards? So first, we're going to talk about different things, uh, different reasons why people collect cards. Number one, money. It's weird. Money makes people happy. So there's flippers. There are flippers that collect or that make uh, more money on the cards that they sell than on the cards that they buy or vice versa. They, they buy cards for a cheaper amount than what they sell and they make a nice return on investment. I can see why anybody would be uh, happy because of that. Now, the second reason also has to do with money. And this is actually part of the reason why I got back into collecting in the mid 2000s, like 2012. So basically the story was I'd collected a lot as a kid, collected all the way through the 80s uh, when I was a teenager, then into the 90s when I was a young adult, got married and obviously kind of, you know, meandered from there in the 90s when the junk wax and all that stuff was happening. So enter the 2000s, 
throughout the most of the 2000s, there was just a small blip in time when uh, I started working at CBSSports.com where I rekindled that collecting again with uh, Tristan Cockroft of ESPN. He and I got into get, going back to card stores and card shows and stuff, so it was a lot more fun at that point. So it was probably a two- or three-year period, then he went to ESPN, so that kind of killed that time period for me collecting as well. Fast forward about eight to ten years in 2012, I started realizing that I was doing stuff like I was, uh, the money I was making from writing was not staying with me, so to speak. Like I would, maybe I'd invest it, I'd get stocks or I'd, I would put it somewhere and I'd eventually go right back to it and just either the stock would go down or I'd blow the money anyways. So it dawned on me, I'm not really great at saving money or investing in money. And so it started to dawn on me. I said, you know what? Maybe if I turn this cash into a thing, an asset that I won't just turn around and, and sell immediately when I need money, then maybe I can hold on to that money. It can be future money for me. So that's what I started to do. In 2012, I started buying all sorts of uh, legendary rookie cards. I say legend. I mean, Michael Jordan rookie card. Um, the Dan Marino. So I started buying slabbed rookie cards. I understood at that point, like graded cards meant something different. So that's the second type of person that uh, I think card collecting makes people happy is because you know you're converting this money, your money you have into assets. You know a little bit about sports. You know something about sports. So you can take that knowledge and now turn it into something that's um equitable like it can uh, increase in value if you invest correctly now you still have to invest correctly you can't just be buying a billion prospects and, and expecting all of them to go up so it still has to be smart investing right but anyways that's the second way trying to save money by converting that money into assets that makes me happy also so the third way is another way that makes me happy is connecting with my childhood so as a kid Loved to collect cards. I'd go down to the store, get a pack, 25 cents. I remember being 25 cents was the youngest I remember buying cards for. Now, apparently when I was younger, they were cheaper than that, but I don't remember buying those packs. Maybe my brothers bought those. 25 cent packs, though. Pretty awesome knowing that you could get, you know, Bucky Dent cards. What? Yeah, I was trying to hunt down some Bucky Dent cards. Anyways, so that was a big deal for me, um, connecting with my childhood, connecting with your child. When you get... I'm 53 right now. A lot of people get into their midlife crisis time. And this is the time where you can look back and kind of connect with your childhood. And it's not really a risky thing to do. In other words, you're not um, getting into uh, motorcycles or you know uh, skydiving or anything like that. You're just kind of connecting back nostalgically to when you were younger to a simpler time maybe in your life. So that's the third way I think you could be happy collecting cards. The fourth way is similar to number three is connecting with, instead of your childhood, you're connecting with your family. Maybe this is connecting with your kids. Maybe you have kids now and you collect with your kids like uh, Josh over at MJ Family Time Cards. He collects with his son, Micah, and man, they have an awesome time. I am incredibly jealous of those two. They look like they have an awesome time. And just to know it's a father-son thing, I know that's going to be something for the rest of Josh's life. That's going to mean a lot to him and flip that around. This is still number four, connecting with family, connecting with your parents or your older brothers or, or older family members. So, <clears throat> so excuse me, I'm still working on bronchitis. Sorry. So one of the things for me is when I was a kid, my dad used to buy us cards. So this was a great connection for me and him. And we would talk about current players but he would relay what it was like in the 60s and the 50s with Mickey Mantle playing. So he was a big Yankees fan when he was younger. So what a great connection for me to have now. He's been, he died 1993. So here, 31 years later, I still have this connection I can have with him by getting some older cards and kind of rekindling those memories with him. So now here, fast forward 20, 30 years, Josh and Micah, who we just talked about, Micah's going to have those connections with Josh, that he, he's going to have those memories that he's uh, that Josh and him has built uh, opening up packs together on their YouTube channel. And they're going to have videos on it. That's pretty awesome. He's going to have videos of his trip to the National Sports Card Convention with his dad. 
How amazing is that? I just love that. All right, so that's number four. Number five, I think one reason a lot of people collect, there's another reason uh, that makes me happy is the challenge. Completing a puzzle. I like puzzles. I like figuring out word problems. I like fi- solving things, math stuff. I love, I love the challenge of stuff. So the challenge of getting all these rookie cards, getting 36 of the best all-time baseball cards players ever in the the, you know three or four different eras and getting rookie cards or at least getting the the uh, earliest card of them I can get and the best grade I can get that's a fun challenge I love that and I have them in each of the sports that's a nice challenge I like doing that I can upgrade whenever I get time whenever I get money or as we mentioned earlier if I have to uh, dip into the assets they're available for me to dip into so it doesn't hurt me Uh, necessarily to do those so that's that's a way that it makes me happy now number six a little bit the opposite number six is the gambler there are people that they are happy gambling they love to go gamble that might be kind of a problem maybe that's a little bit of an addiction kind of thing so i don't know if it's a good kind of happiness but it's certainly a way that uh people can get happy when they're collecting cards is when they finally hit on the thing they've been chasing for forever so uh that's not probably the healthiest one but it is something that people do get happy over number seven this is another one for me now i mentioned i was away for cards away from cards in 2012 came back again uh i was collected through 2015 getting more and more rookie cards peyton manning did the tom brady all these slabs i'm gathering and then for like three or four five year period i just kind of stopped i was working a lot uh i got married in 2000 i had to think about this in 2019 but i was dating throughout all of 2018 so certainly that um took a lot of my attention away uh from card collecting so we got married in 2019 COVID hit 2020 and guess what now we're back into the card collecting everybody's going nuts over cards but for me not only was i away from cards but even though i was writing about sports i'd been writing about sports online for uh 20 years at this point so uh 2001 to 2020 i had been writing about fantasy sports about sports sports online for all that time and right around i want to say right around 2010 2011 i got sick of it it was it became a job it wasn't it wasn't as fun as i had um, expected it to be or wanted it to be. So for that 10 year period, it was a job. It was tough. It was a, it was a, uh, it was a, it was difficult. It was, you know, tough to get excited because not only were you writing about it during all the, during the day and, and just being, um, you have to be engaged in it at night. That's when the games are or on the weekends. That's when the games are. So now you're, you're engaged with it nonstop again, and it's all for work. You know, there's very little um, for pleasure uh, sports watching when you are a sports writer. I mean, it's just it's just how it is. Now, obviously, you can be interested in other sports, and that might be something uh, where you can rekindle your uh, own personal love for sports. But when you write about all different fantasy sports, they're all it's all turns into work. So if there was a good ten year period when sports was not as fun as I had remembered it. 2020 the uh covid hit now it sounds like we're making covid sound like oh man this is awesome well when covid hit uh the last dance documentary came out the bubble the nba bubble what an awesome time to watch basketball and with the nba bubble championship in orlando i lived near orlando like that was just such a a crazy crazy time period for sports so for me it had it, it allowed me to reset and Remember, you know what? Sports is pretty awesome. I did enjoy this. And this is a really interesting period of time. That 2020 year, 2020, 2021 COVID years were really interesting. Shortened MLB season, um, the NBA bubble, a lot of interesting stuff. The Bucks, obviously, as a Bucks fan, the 2020 season, you know, they hear Tom Brady ends up joining, like just insane, just an absolutely insane um, time period for me, rekindled that love of sports so maybe that's what 
sports car collecting is done for you as well. So you let me know what makes you happy about collecting sports cards. We're going to come back in a couple other episodes. We got a couple other things to talk about. I want to talk about the events, the specific events that make you happy. We're going to talk about that in the next episode. And then finally, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about what makes you unhappy about collecting cards. We'll talk about that too. But until then, make sure you have a happy hobby.